talk about the finals. Finals. Dallas Mavericks representing the West. Hey. Boston Celtics representing the East. East, 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 East. Who y'all got? Mavs all day, baby. How many games? Six. Who seven in Dallas. Dallas and seven? Dallas and seven. What you got? I have Dallas and six, but I'm like hey. rethinking that because like if he picked Dallas. Get it. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Dallas no, 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 fan no, though, no. so I, I ain't about the predictions. Like, fuck I can, Boston, I can win if Boston wins. Fuck a Boston. Well, this man here. Do I want to win? Do you, what team do you think you're going to win? Pick the, I still pick the Mavs. <laughs> I, <laughs> like, I, I can't in good. I can't in good conscience pick, pick Boston. Boston. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How you go root but for Jason badly, Tatum? Now? But how badly do I want to win? Is the question. You want it so bad, you go root for Jason Tatum. These wins and losses don't mean shit. Right. Here's here's the thing. It's doing predictions, looking at the NBA Finals. It's not who I want to win. Mm -hmm. I want the Dallas Mavericks to win. I think the Boston Celtics will win. And that's literally where I'm at. And that's what I'm like, do I go with, like, okay, I can win and be right. Or can I just root against Boston in good conscience because, like, I ain't picking them either. Like, I'm going to say, I got Boston and seven to win this series. And I'll be cheering for Dallas every single (laughs) game. I do not care about being right. Like, I want Dallas to win. But I think it's going to be Boston because, like. It does feel like a seven game series. No, it's at least six. It's going to be a really good series. Mm -hmm. I don't think people are going to. Like, it's going to be a really good series. I think we're. I got Dallas and seven because Boston has a tendency to give you games. And I think Dallas has a tendency to close those games that they're going Mm -hmm. to give them. They got the clutch players. And that. Cause like there were a number of games that Boston probably should have lost. Not even just in the Pacers series, but like earlier series in Miami. the playoffs. <laughs> Cleveland. Like yeah. in every series, there are games where it's like they didn't actually win them in the clutch. It's just like yeah. the other team out. Blew it, boy. <laughs> and it's like Dallas has two of the best closers in the league. Absolutely. Firing on all cylinders right now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's like you said, like they have a tendency to give away games down the stretch. And they actually are going up against a team that can take it from them. Correct. So, but here's the thing with that too. Dallas has not played a team like Boston. Mm-hmm. Like this is going to be the best team that they play and they're uniquely put together to present a very different defensive challenge for them to try to solve. Now, I'm, we know good offense always, good offense beats good defense. Mm-hmm. But Boston has, they can throw out four plus wing defenders at a time. Yeah. Like that's no other team has been able to do that to that extent where it's like, okay, we can throw Derek White on Kyrie and have him right. start there. We can put Drew on Luca or we can put Jalen Brown on Luca to start. It don't matter because the way Boston wants to play defense anyways it's gonna is it's going to switch. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Boston is going to switch any of those matches and be like, ah, I'm at a disadvantage. Like, who are you hunting? Yeah. Derek White because he's the small one. Mm-hmm. Luca, I think Luca will. No, yeah. but sure. <laughs> but that's, that's what you got to do. You got to pick the worst of the best. Like, but also, the thing with switching is that. Like it's one on one, and like they have two dudes that can kind of break you down off the dribble and get to the shot that they want. They can, but they have, but they have the, the best perimeter defenders that you can throw at. For like, sure. so it's going to be a battle of we have Derek White and Drew Holiday, <laughs> and then you have Luca and Kyrie. Because here's the thing: like, yes, for sure, the two of them are going to get buckets in Dallas, but I think people underestimate Boston's offense as well. Like Boston's offense has been outstanding throughout the year. It's been great during the playoffs as well. Like the highest efficiency in NBA history. Yes, like this. It's not as if it's like it's just defense with Boston. Like mm-hmm. they literally are both ways. Like mm-hmm. you got Jalen Brown. Okay, you're going to cut off Jason Tatum's water. Mm-hmm. Cool. You also have to account for the fact that Luca and Kyrie are going to have to defend too. Correct. Mm-hmm. Now, which they've as, been doing at a better level. They have, than especially they have Kyrie. Yeah. Especially Kyrie. So I'm going to give him credit on that. But Absolutely. you can get situations where, and we've seen it, because Drew Holiday isn't being asked to be an offensive wet. Like you've seen it a little bit more where a situation like, "Hey, Drew, you got this. Go, go get this bucket real quick." Mm-hmm. Or Tatum might be off, but you might have. You got Brown. You got Derek White. Like, and Chris Alps Porzingis is back. And, that's that's going to be the game changer. And Dallas has not had to play we don't a stretch have, big that they had. Dallas to has. Like I don't know years. how how they can. But I think Gafford and well, Lively have the they mobility. Just like yes, they did. I mean, I know he won that, but like, yeah. Porzingis, they, 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 had, they had to play Cat, but they also had Gobert out there. Right. Yeah. So it, it, it's and like I guess Chet is also kind of like you had player. Chet, but who do you Chet or KP when it mm-hmm. comes to three point shooting? So like that's the thing, and even with that, like you had Gobert and you had uh, Cat, so mm-hmm. one still was able to cheat off, and you can play. You can't yeah. cheat off nobody on Boston. They gonna play five out. Mm-hmm. Now you pulling those bigs out. 
Yeah, but they got they have mobile enough bigs to where they can actually yeah. steal. The only one that's the best mobile big they have is Maxi Cleaver. Do you think Lively can move? He's not. He better can than move he, for a big, yeah, but like but, he he's not dancing on the perimeter with Jason Tatum. Mm-hmm. Or Brown, like that's that's where this matchup gets real interesting because it's gonna be five out and everybody's gonna have to come out because mm-hmm. Dallas before they could park Gafford bottom rim because you don't really yeah. want him in space. And as they still much. got uh, Derek Jones. He's a wing guy. He's gonna be mm-hmm. probably he, on one he's of the going, Jays. He's one of their better defenders too. He is. Mm-hmm. He is. So like he'll still he'll be able to clip one of like, even if so, the on off on defensive side they'll probably put him on either Tatum or mm-hmm. uh and then you put PJ on the other one. Yeah. Good luck. Like. I I hear you, but like the size PJ can match Tatum's size. No, I, hear, I trust me when I. Say I, I get it though. <laughs> like but still, Jason Tatum. It's like, tough. <laughs> but at least they have something where it's like like it's a complete mismatch across the board. They can mm-hmm. literally match up with them size wise too. I think that Boston has the advantage in this series. It's can Dallas do enough defensively to slow them down, and can they figure out ways to poke holes in their defense? Mm-hmm. Well, Dallas- like I think that's the way we have to look at it. It's not necessarily yeah. like, oh, Boston got like, you kind of have to start from the point of like, Boston presents these problems. How does Dallas solve it, and not vice versa? Mm-hmm. Dallas would be the best defense Boston has played this postseason, right? Yeah, they're best defense in the league for, for the last twenty games. So yeah, the Cleveland would have been better had they not been hurt, decimated mm-hmm. by injury. So but- I feel uh, again, it's one of those like. Boston, Dallas hasn't played an offense like this in essence, mm-hmm. and Boston hasn't played a defense like this. In mm-hmm. Yeah. So which one? That's all. I, I just, it's got to go seven. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to go. It's gonna be some, but I feel like Boston just gonna give some. The ones that they typically give away, they going it's gonna hurt them this time. It might, mm-hmm. and that's the thing too, because I can see a path where Dallas went. Like, mm-hmm. like I said, I'm, let me be very. I, I'm cheering for <laughs> Dallas in this series. <laughs> Uh, because here's the thing: if we get to the fourth quarter, we get down to crunch time. It's five minutes left, and the game is close. Mm-hmm. That's where Boston does not do well. Give it to Tatum, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna be like this: this man thing. He he got a Kobe fetish. Who was I talking to? I won't say their name. <laughs> I won't say their name. But they said Jason Tatum is just Danny Granger with a Kobe fetish. Jesus Christ, Damn. Danny I Granger. Said, I used to fuck with Danny Granger. Danny Granger he was, was cool. cool. Yeah, I was just like Danny that Granger. Actually, cool. might be shame at Danny Granger. Yeah, Danny Granger was cool. Like I fucked with Danny Granger. Yeah, Danny Granger's Danny somewhere Granger's like, what the fuck? Why you saying me? Yeah, he was cool. Let me let me ask y'all this because we said who we think we got. Who do you think is going to be the biggest X factor in the series? It could be either team. Kyrie. Why Kyrie? Um, his ability to play off of Luca, um, and his ability to just take control of the game, um, especially like in clutch time, yeah. like off his run through him, like especially like if we need a bucket or it's two minutes left in the game, it's it's a close game. Like Kyrie go take over, and I feel like just, just the one two punch win, you, but I feel like Kyrie will be his next factor. Do you believe because he can is saying he can about still the mental move, part? Yeah, and I feel like that even Kyrie doesn't even have to score much. Just him. You don't need to in this series. Yeah, in this series is going to have to, but he can. He still can be effectively offensively, and not even like you know have to be the bucket or whatever. So I, that's why I feel like I really would be. Eric, who's your X factor in this series? Poor thing is, I like know. we don't know what his health status yeah, is. We don't know what we get, and like he presents, like to your point, like he does present more of a problem, big one, yeah, to because <laughs> like yeah. I think that if it's just Horford and you know. Uh, Gaffer chase the, him around. The jumpy jump guy. What's the, the jumpy, the jump, jumpy guy? jump guy? Uh, Cornette. Ah. Luke Cornette or Xavier Tillman. Like, those are much more manageable bids that you can kind of sag off. Like, yes, Al Horford can kill you, but like, he he's kind threes. of reluctant. <laughs> he's kind of reluctant to it. Yeah, he like, don't, he do don't it want to do that. But he will do it. Porzingis <laughs> wants to do that. Like, it, there's a difference there where it's like, oh, this is the shot you're giving me? Cool. Whereas, I was like, nah, fuck it. I guess I'll take this shot. You know what I mean? And then once he gets rolling, like he gets a little bit more confident, but I don't feel like that's ne- like you can kind of like play the psychological game with him a little bit where it's like yeah. daring him to shoot and then he really gets reluctant. And then the flip side to the, your Poisingas point, as well as on defense, like they missed yeah. his rim protection yep. like that. Mm-hmm. You get another seven footer back in there to help you out with that. So yeah. I think that's and plus he got something to prove too, because him and Luca, you know, just how he, he left Dallas, Dallas. Yep. Mm-hmm. and him and Luca got it. You know, we're we're butting heads. They're gonna need him for Lob City. And I was gonna say to your point about rim protection, like that opens up things for Lively and Gafford to mm-hmm. catch lives at the rim because it's like. If you think about Dallas, it's not necessarily guys that are going to, like, drive and get to the rim. Like, yes, Kyrie can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he has a crazy finishing package. 
pause. Um, <laughs> and, Hag age. And, but like Luca's not like a, you know, like a Giannis where it's like get downhill and finish yeah. at the rim. It's kind of like they get to their spots, they rise up, they, they shoot jumpers. Where But like where they're deadly around the rim is like that dunker spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like if you got KP down there, that helps a bit, a ton. Whereas Horford is not the vertical threat that. Nah. He's a little bit slower too. Yeah. Tim, who's your X Factor in this NBA Finals matchup? I'm torn between. Hi, torn. I'm Eric. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, torn. Uh, Dad jokes. Hey. The bench of Dallas. Because mm-hmm. I what like. Uh, that's my point. <laughs> that's that's exactly my point. It's like, like we, we we run about they the, run about the starters. Cool on um, both teams. Cool, but once you start bringing in the benches, they got some length though. But they Boston's do. bench is a lot more consistent. Mm-hmm. Pritchard will have a game. <laughs> like, he'll come off the bench and light your ass up. But out they of also nowhere. have more defensive liabilities on their bench, too. True. Which may open up things for them offensively. But so it's also a tie. Clarify for the people which thems and days you mean. Sorry. There are more defensive liabilities on Boston's bench. Like, you have yes. Pritchard, you have Hauser, mm-hmm. you got Cornette. Correct. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and there are more people the that you can, kind of, yeah. And there are more people that you can attack. Like, if, you know, like you get to one of those stages in the game where you have one of, well, you're always gonna have one of Luka or Kyrie on the court at all, all times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it happens to be a time where Boston's bench bench heavy lineup is on, and like you have both of those yep. on, Let's you go. come <laughs> here, you come here, like you know, it's just gonna be like shooting fish in a barrel. So like Peace that man. may be where <clears throat> Dallas is able to make up mm-hmm. a little bit of ground that they lose when it's just like starters. Starters. And starters. That's a great point. Or Drew Holiday. Drew's gonna be mine, so you can go. So I'll have, keep yeah, the there you go. Then. Oh man, they gonna make me hate Drew after this. <laughs> See, that, uh, so here's the thing: they can never make me hate you, right? Too. That's oh. the thing. I I follow this real cool Mavericks fan on Twitter. We've been Twitter followers for years at this point. He was, you know, he's a Mavericks fan, so he's like, "Yeah, this ain't gonna be a speed everybody thing." This and this and this and that. Yeah. And I was like, "Man, listen, Luca and Drew will be a battle whenever that matchup occurs." But just be. The, having drew holiday <laughs> these are minutes man. and being able to throw him out there in playoff basketball where refs do not call things as well like you saw lou dort i mean listen luca still was luca but we talked about it before in tech mm-hmm. Files. so if you listen you understand how we feel about star players you you can never really take a star out the game you just got to try to make it difficult mm-hmm. you don't want them getting 30 on you know 15 shots you want them to get 30 on 25, 30 shots. You want to make it hard on them. Mm-hmm. And Drew Holiday can do that. The He's switching the prowess, ever. like, again, Boston wants to try to play you one-on-one as much as possible. They're going to switch and they're going to try to keep you in front. And when you have a defensive guy like Drew Holiday being one of those dudes, like, he can really swing a series, especially if the refs let him play. Yes. If you're Joe Mazzula, mm-hmm. how do you deploy Drew defensively? That's a great question. And giving some options. So, like, obviously, you can start him on Luka. You can start him on Kyrie. I'm starting Derek White on Kyrie. But considering that you're going to be switching a bunch anyway, like, do you use him against, like, maybe one of the bigs where he can kind of hold his own? Like, he he's, he's, he's demonstrated that he can hold his own against five, especially ones that aren't necessarily dominant back-to-the-basket players. Yeah. Um, so then that messes up. Like, that completely blows up their pick and roll, like, off jump. Mm-hmm. Because like you call up a big, and then you got Drew Holiday switching. Like you're not, yeah. you're not creating an advantage in that way. Listen, with that being said, like I think I, if I remember correctly, when they played in March, which was the only game they played after the trade deadline, I believe it was Jalen Brown who had the Luca assignment. Yeah. Probably for that reason, with the switching and everything like that. So then you can get real funky with that. So, I mean, you, it could be Jalen Brown, but I won't even be cute. I'm just gonna be like Drew this is your primary assignment it's not gonna be the only assignment you've got to throw different things at them but like i think i would just go Derek white on Kyrie, drew holiday on luca and let's roll from there as the primary ones like of course mm-hmm. you don't see different things yeah. but i think that's where i would go it's gonna be a great series man absolutely i cannot I'm excited. wait yeah, I'm, I'm excited to watch it right, i'm thinking through this a little bit more because i'm like you can hide hide porzingis on uh effort jones jr no. and then if you have drew on the big then it's like then the switches don't make then the sense. switches don't matter and you can still keep Porzingis close to the rim. And that's kind of like, how they play can, their zone. You said that's what? That's kind of how they play their zone where Drew is kind of man like in the, the middle. middle mm-hmm. Which is 
<laughs> what? So the minute that the big is switched, like he's switching right onto the guard. Yeah, it makes sense. That's smart. That's smart as shit. When I seen it early, I'm like, that's that makes a lot of fucking sense. Man. <laughs> but yeah, I can't wait for this to start. I think it goes at least six. We got three people saying it's gonna be Dallas. Yeah, I'm the lone, give it to the, the lone person saying it's gonna I be Boston. Thursday. <laughs> I think I uh, would never <laughs> in my life say Boston. Just know that. Boston. Journalistic Till integrity be damned. Till I die. <laughs> I don't care if I get a job with ESPN. They're going to have a fuck boss. <laughs> <laughs> Fire me. All right. Let us know, y'all, like, in the comments. Let us know on wherever is social media, who mm-hmm. y'all got in the NBA finals as well. And I'd be yeah, curious yeah. to know if anybody listened to this conversation was like, I got so-and-so. Then they heard it and it was like, mm, you know what? Y'all make valid points. <laughs> I actually think I'm going to go with so-and-so instead. So let us know how y'all feeling about the finals. Indeed. I think it's going to be fun. 